So, in my game, I've got this weapon switching system, where I can cycle through the different weapons that I have unlocked. At the moment, there's just two of them. But eventually, that's going to be like six, seven, eight different weapons that I can cycle through in this way. And it's actually a remarkably easy system, so let's take a look at how to make something similar to this today. We're here in a brand new third-person template project. If you want the finished project file with the weapon switching code implemented in it, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon and for YouTube members to download the finished project files, as always. Now, let's get started on actually making this. What we're going to need is we're going to need uh, our character, which is just going to be our third-person character in this case. And we're going to be needing a weapon. So let's make ourselves, uh, just in the content folder here, a blueprint class, which will just be a normal actor. And we'll call this a blueprint uh, weapon. We won't actually be using this. This is just going to be the parent class that all the other weapons are going to inherit from. Uh, just because it's easier that way. If you want to put any code for like collision related stuff on this, you can just code it onto here. And then all the child actors are going to have all of that functionality as is. So what we'll do is we'll add a static mesh. I'll just give that a default value of like a cube, something like that. And then I'll also give this a uh, box collision for overlap and just make that slightly larger just to have some placeholders for the actual weapons that we uh, might want to use at some point. And then, of course, uh, you can put a lot of code in here for uh, on-begin overlap, and then you use, like, damage uh, code, whatever. We're not going to worry about all the damage-related stuff and uh, doing actual animations. We're only worried about swapping through the weapons that we have here. So let's make two child blueprints of this and we'll do that by right clicking and create a child blueprint and we'll say uh bp weapon i uh, will call this sword just sword and then we'll duplicate that and call this one hammer something like that and i will import a couple of models here that are from my low poly weapon pack which is also available on the Patreon to buy or on Gumroad. Links are down below in the description, so I'll import the sword. And I think I also have a hammer in there, which I then will also import. In here, we can now simply, uh, in the sword blueprint, say, hey, this static mesh is going to be our uh, sword static mesh. And then we can change around the box collision uh, to match whatever our sword needs to be uh, very simply like this again this is mostly for like actual damage uh recognition and calculation stuff which we're not going to worry about today so i'm not gonna do this uh too accurately but i think you get the point and then for the hammer weapon of course what we want to do is we want to get our static mesh and we want to use our war hammer that we've made now we've got a actor for both of these which we can use on our player character. So let's open up our player character again, go into our viewport, and we'll add into uh, the mesh here, we'll add a child actor component. A child actor component is a component that, as the name suggests, is a actor that you can use as a component on another actor. And that might sound a little confusing at first, but it'll be very apparent how this works in a moment. First and foremost, uh, we want to set the parent socket to being uh, whatever bone or socket we have uh, on the hand. So we have the right hand in this case, which is pretty good. Maybe just move it down ever so slightly. So it's actually in the hand. If the animation is fucking you up a little bit, like it is for me right here, what you can do is you can uh, select your mesh and then in animation, in advance, we can say uh, pause the animation, pauses the animation, and allows us to move these things around a little bit more neatly. And then once we're done, it is important to uh, unpause the animation again, otherwise um, it won't animate in game. Now here we can choose a child actor class, and in the child actor class we can put in pretty much any actor we have in our game, any class for any actor, including our BP sword. So when we select that, we will see, hey, there we go, we've got our sword. Now, the rotation is a little bit off, uh, so let's set the rotation to something a bit more reasonable. For that, I'm going to, of course, first pause the animation again, 
and then we will rotate this sword around until it is in a somewhat reasonable position uh, for holding a sword. Of course, our animation isn't really made here to be holding a sword, so you might have to get a little bit creative with the placement, but this works well enough, and now our character is holding that sword in its hand. And now we can very easily swap around these different weapons by just changing the child actor component class. So let's make uh, some stuff for that. I'm just going to hard code this uh, with the Q debug key and the E debug key. Of course, if you implement this in your actual game, you would uh, link them up to these enhanced inputs. Uh, instead of doing it like this. But just for showing how it works, this is a lot faster and a lot easier. Now, we need two things. That is an array of all the different weapon classes that we can cycle through. You can add or remove things on runtime from this array. That's not a problem at all. Uh, it does make some of the systems a little bit more complicated if you were to do that sometimes. But for the most part, it's not going to be that big of an issue. So let's call this uh, weapons and that will be of variable type BP weapon. And it will be a class reference, not an object reference. You might be used to usually using object references. We're going to be referencing the specific class. And this will allow us to give values of anything that is a BP weapon or a child of a BP weapon. So if we change it into an array and we compile, we now have the option to say, hey, we want to have the sword in there and also the hammer. Then we also want a variable for keeping track of which entry in this array we're currently at. And that's just going to be an index that keeps track of that. So we'll just call this current weapon index. And that will be a singular value. And that will just simply be an integer that's going to keep track of that. Now, when we press the Q key, I want to uh, cycle up in our array. And when I press the E key, I want to cycle down in the array. And the way we do that is when we press this, the first thing we do is we uh, check a branch because we want to check whether or not uh, cycling up is even possible. If we're at the end of the array, we want to wrap back around to the start of the array instead of uh, adding one to our current index. So let's just check that right away. We can get our current weapon index and we can check whether or not our current index is already equal to our weapon array length minus one. And this is important because the weapon array length gives you the amount of items in the array. But of course, array indexes start at zero. So if you have five items, those will be labeled index zero, one, two, three, and four. So if you want to get the index of the last item in your array, you get the length minus one. And we compare that. So if our current index is the same as the last index in our array, then we want to do something. And if it's not, we want to do something else. If it is, what we want to do is we just simply want to set the current weapon index back to zero. Wrap it all the way around back to the beginning. If it isn't, that means that there's still room for us to uh, cycle up some more. So all we'll do is we'll increment that integer instead. Now, for cycling down, we'll do something very, very similar, except we're checking this the other way around. So, of course, we'll add in a branching node on pressed, and then we'll check whether our current weapon index is already at zero. Because if it's already at zero, we're not going to be able to cycle down, and we need to wrap around to the very end of the array instead. So we'll just check whether or not this is equal to zero. And if it is equal to zero, we're going to set it to whatever this is. So we already have our weapon length minus one. So we can just kind of use the same node setup there. And this will set it to the end of the array. If it isn't zero, that means that there's still going to be room for the index to be lowered. So we can simply uh, decrement integer, meaning that we take one away from it. This sets up the proper weapon index for us to then set our child actor components to the weapon that we're working with here. So now we can get our child actor component and we can set the child actor class. And we'll set the child actor class to be whatever is in our weapons array. And we will get a copy of whatever our current weapon index is. 
after we've set it to its new value. So it doesn't really matter which one of these paths we come from, because in the end, all of that will still work out the same way. We just updated our current weapon index, and now we're going to set that new corresponding uh, class to be our child actor. What you might want to do uh, for your static mesh, by the way, is you want to go into the collision and maybe just set this to have no collision, otherwise it's going to mess up uh, both your camera and your player collision itself. Uh, if you have any systems that use the collision of the weapon mesh itself, I'm sure that you have uh, more specific solutions for this issue, uh, but for now we're just going to disable the weapon collision itself. So now we can see we're holding the sword as you would expect us to. Uh, it's stabbing us in the head, uh, don't worry about that for the time being. But now if I press the E key, we are changing to the hammer. And if I press the E key again, we're changing to the sword. And I can also cycle down fairly easily. Let's add like two more weapons just to show you that right now we're just switching between the two of them. But it's actually cycling through the array uh, instead of just swapping back and forth. So... Let's add the weapons for the club and the morning star here as well. And for those, we'll just duplicate these and just simply change out the meshes. And once we've done that, we can come back into our weapons array and simply add those two new entries to it as well. So we have uh, the club and the morning star now both in the array as well, meaning that we now have four weapons to cycle through. We still start off with the sword, but we can now cycle through the Morning Star, which is looking a little bit small, in my opinion, uh, the club, the hammer, and then back to the sword. But we can also then cycle back down the other way through. So this is how my simple weapon cycling works for my specific game. And I think this is a pretty good base for most games. If you have different systems that you can use, like an inventory system to equip and unequip weapons, uh, that also obviously works you can always have all of the weapons on your character and just switch which objects like the active weapon. That's another way to do it. I like doing it this way. I think uh, this is a neat way to do it. A couple of upsides to this way of doing things is every single time we change the weapon class, it's actually deleting the current weapon and spawning in a new weapon because it's a child actor um, component that we have. So if in the weapon blueprint here I just put in a quick uh, print string on begin play, what you will note is that it actually runs that every single time I switch weapons. So if I have something like a particle system, like I have in my uh, own game, whenever a new weapon spawns in, that will play any time I switch uh, into a new weapon because it's spawning in a new actor to begin with. Now, the downside of that is if you have any data that is stored on your weapon that needs to be persistent in any kind of way, uh, that will get removed and you need to store that in a different location instead. So that's the basic idea of how my weapon switching system works. Uh, there's a link down below again in the description for anybody who wants to download this project with all of the code. And I'll also keep in the assets, uh, a couple of weapons that are in there for you to check out and play around with if you're a YouTube member or a Patreon. As well as if you want the entire 30-some weapon pack for the low-poly weapons that I have made, it is available for purchase on Gumroad and on Patreon as well. So go check that out if you're interested. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 